Okay, guys, I think I'm live. So here's Paula from The Power of Ozone. And this will be the first live broadcast, so it won't be very long. It will be short. I just want to test how this works, if the sound is all right, if everything works out fine. And by the way, so I do not have access to the comments. So if you do write any comments on YouTube, I cannot see them right now because I'm using a software which does not give me access to that. So, but I will check the comments later on. So the topic of this video is why you should not use the concentration of 55 micrograms per milliliter when you do DAV ozone injections. And first of all, if you're interested in DIV ozone injections, then you want, may want to subscribe to my newsletter. And later on, you will find a link to the newsletter in the description uh, in the video uh, under the video, uh, because there will be an announcement about DIV ozone injections next week. So if you're interested in, in DIV ozone injections, then you may want to subscribe to that. Um, Okay, hold on a second. There's no sound. Someone says there's no sound. I, oh, I do see the comments. Uh, sound. Well, it tells me that everything is fine with the sound. Okay, can anyone else tell me whether they can hear me? Is there, is there sound? Do you guys, do you guys can hear me? Can anyone hear me? Okay, if you could just write in the comments whether you can hear me or not, that would be awesome. It's fine. Okay, so <laughs> this is the hat. Yeah, no hat today, but okay, sound seems to be fine. All right, so back to the topic. Right, so why uh, do you not want to use such a high ozone concentration of 55 micrograms per milliliter? And first of all, okay, where does this idea of those 55 micrograms per milliliter come from? And so anyone who has looked into DIV ozone injections, probably you probably came across the protocol of one of the ozone grades. So uh, the, the main ozone doctor who is renowned for doing, uh, have, who, for doing DIV ozone injections uh, in the hundreds of thousands, and he's been doing them for several decades. And I actually respect his work greatly. So he came up with this protocol and he said that you need to use this specific ozone concentrations, especially if you're using Lyme disease or otherwise it will not be effective. And so he's been doing this for a very long time. And now I'm here telling you that no, this idea is actually not a good idea that you should not be doing this protocol. You should not be using this ozone concentration. And the main reason for this is of course the risk of phlebitis. So phlebitis is the inflammation of the vein. So when phlebitis occurs, then your vein gets red, it gets painful and hard and over time it will become sclerosed. So it can actually collapse and it will be very difficult or nearly impossible to puncture it in the future. And this of course is a problem because number one, anyone who's doing DIV ozone injections, then he's doing them for therapeutical reasons because, uh, because they're getting some benefit from it. And of course, they're hoping to keep doing the DIV ozone injections. But if you lose the vein because it becomes sclerosed and, and, uh, and scar tissue develops and it's impossible to puncture it, then of course this will make it impossible to continue with the DIV ozone injections, number one. Uh, number two, if let's say some medical emergency occurs and you have to go to the hospital and they, they have to infuse you with some life-saving medications or liquids, and it is difficult for the nurses to find a vein, then this, of course, can become a problem. So it's not a good idea to lose veins, to, to have sclerosed veins. So you do not want to risk phlebitis. You don't want uh, your, your veins to develop phlebitis. But when you use such a high ozone concentration, like 55 micrograms per milliliter, and this is a very high ozone concentration, then of course you're running the risk of losing your veins eventually, uh, and eventually, and yeah, so this risk is very real. 
And so this is number one. So this is the main reason why you do not want to use such a high ozone concentration. And now as to the claim that it has to be 55 micrograms per milliliter, not 50, not 52 or 57, otherwise it's not effective. I do not believe that this is correct. And some of you may be outraged. How dare I contradict someone who's been doing this for decades, so he must know better. And yet, yes, I am here telling you that this is not correct, that first of all, that doctor can't possibly know that, he cannot possibly know that it is the concentration of 55 micrograms per milliliter that has this magical therapeutical property that is effective against Lyme. And let me explain to you why. That is, when the doctor developed that protocol, and it's been already many years, at that point he used an ozone generator, which he has abandoned since. So he's not using that ozone generator anymore, from what I understand. And uh, the reason why he stopped using that ozone generator is because he had it tested, it, and it turned out that the ozone generator on which he developed that protocol of those f magical 55 micrograms per milliliter was inaccurate. So th th those are things I heard. This is not confirmed, okay? So you can take it as rumors, but from what I understand, this is what happened, is that he had this generator tested and it turned out that the generator produced ozone concentration, which varied up to 20%. But that's, that's when he developed that protocol of those 55 micrograms per milliliter which of course doesn't make sense because because the generator, as was later found, found out, was inaccurate, so he could not have possibly known what ozone concentration he was using. And since then he switched to a different ozone generator, to a German brand, which is much more accurate, which is exceptionally accurate. But after switching to the generators, he did not adjust his protocol. He stuck to those 55 micrograms per milliliter. So in my opinion, he can't possibly know that it was this ozone concentration, those 55 micrograms per milliliter, which, uh, which had those special properties since his generator was not even that accurate that he could have, uh, that he could have uh, said that. So that's number one. Number two is that doctor advises his patients to load up on vitamin C during the course of DAV ozone injections. And uh, this, of course, will minimize some of the effect of the ozone and it will reduce some of the concentration. And from what I understand, the main reason why he suggests people load up on vitamin C IVs during the DIV therapy is, so, is to keep the veins healthy uh, as long as possible. And this alone shows the fact that the vitamin C number one will counteract some of the DAV ozone and also that the risk of developing phlebitis and of losing one's veins uh, during D such high ozone concentrations when doing DAV injections, that this is, this is real. Um, also another thing is that recently another doctor said that he has actually abandoned the practice of using 50 micrograms per milliliter. So there was another doctor, I assume it is someone who was trained by that DIV expert that you may know who I'm talking about, but I don't want to know, I don't want to name names because people get upset. Uh, so, uh, so another doctor who used to follow that advice of using 50 or 55 micrograms per milliliter on his patients, he has posted in a group that I'm also a member of where many other ozone doctors are members. And he has posted, he says he's not using 50 micrograms per milliliter uh, anymore. Instead, he's using 30. And he said that he's uh, seeing just as good results without the risk of, uh, of phlebitis in his patients. So this also is an indication that it's not necessary to use this specific ozone concentration. Also consider the following. So 
55 micrograms per milliliter. As I said, this is a very high ozone concentration. And this is great. This is a great ozone concentration if you want to treat varicose veins. So this is something that I used to do in my practice and it works absolutely fabulously. So when, when you use concentrations between 50 and 70 micrograms per milliliter for varicose veins, so for those bulging, blue, ugly veins that people have on their legs, this will cause inflammation in those veins. And this is what you want, that you want to trigger inflammation in the veins. And what happens is that the vein becomes red, painful, inflamed and hard. And for three or two, four days, it can be, it become very painful to walk. But then the vein heals up and the blue discoloration disappears and the bulging of the vein disappears. And then the varicose vein, vein is gone. And so this is a very effective method to use phlebitis, to use inflammation triggered through ozone, direct ozone injections to treat varicose veins. And this alone shows that such a high ozone concentration is very effective and can reliably and reproducibly cause phlebitis and scleros veins. And of course, yeah, for varicose veins, this is very good because it makes them disappear. But of course, for the veins that you want to keep healthy, like the veins uh, here that you want to keep injecting, this is, of course, not a good idea. So, so yeah, so this is the main reason why it's not a good idea to use 55 micrograms per milliliter when doing DIV ozone injections. And so people may ask, okay, so what is the right uh, concentration? What should one use? And my opinion, what I use, what I've been using is a concentration between 25 and 35 micrograms per milliliter. And this has given me very good effects, very good therapeutic effects. Uh, whenever I have some type of condition that I feel that DIV will take care of, then I do, I do that and I use that type of concentration and I see very good effects. So I don't really see a need to use higher concentrations. So this is the main po point. Now let me check my notes if I wanted to say something else. Right, okay, so another argument that some people may say is, uh, okay, well, but he, the doctor who advises to use such a high ozone concentration, he's been using this for decades, he has hundreds of thousands of patients, and they seem to be fine, their veins seem to be, to be fine. Well, here's the thing, if you, when you visit the ozone group on Facebook, there are actually a number of patients, of his ex-patients, and they report that I, I probably the main problem that people report with DIV is that they lost their veins, that the veins became hard and sclerose and that, um, that, that this is the main complaint that, that people post. Now, again, I don't know how representative those people are in the group. Um, it may be that this occurs, you know, much less in reality. Uh, then, then one has the impression when reading uh, those uh, face group uh, post, uh, uh, face group group uh, posts, uh, it's possible. But um, it it also shows that this is definitely happening. That this is this is a real risk, and that using such high an, uh, ozone concentration for DIV can be problematic. All right, now let me check questions. Okay, how about spider veins? Okay, so spider veins are, can also be treated really in an awesome way with DIV. That's the same thing, but uh, this is a slightly different technique. So one uses a different needle. So for DIV and also for varicose veins, of course, it depends on the size of the varicose veins. Uh, you use a butterfly needle, and I suggest to use a 27 gauge butterfly needle, not bigger. But for spider veins, you need uh, a smaller needle, and you don't use a butterfly needle, but you use just a, a, a normal, like a hypodermic needle. It's also a needle that is used for insulin injections, and you use a 30 gauge needle. And so, what is done is that the needle is uh, bent a little bit at an angle. 
and then inject it into the spider vein. And what with spider veins, you know, this is a tricky situation because spider veins are of course tiny, tiny, tiny veins. So you need to you need to have uh, the uh, you need to work uh, work in a very detailed way and very carefully. And so first of all, you have to actually puncture, manage to puncture those uh, those tiny veins, number one, and then stay in the vein while you're injecting. And there's a way, there's a trick to do this. But uh, so, so first there's the injection, that's number one, a very high concentration between 50 and 70 micrograms per milliliter. And then you pull out the, uh, the needle when you're done. And what is very important is to press with a cotton pad after afterwards. So you want to uh, keep that cotton pad pressed on the injected spider vein for like five to 10 minutes. This is very, very important. And if you do this, then this is th this has a very, very high rate of success rate and it works really fabulously. But yeah, spider veins can also be treated very well with DIB ozone, but the same safety precautions need to be respected uh, when one injects uh, varicose veins or spider veins as with the regular veins. So the same safety precautions that, uh, that people can learn. So yes, so, uh, someone says 3 gamma is good enough. Yes, absolutely. I believe 30 gamma or even less, like between 25 and 30 should be absolutely fine. Okay, there's another question. Do you need to feel tightness in the chest or cough to reach O3 saturation levels? No, absolutely not. No, that, no, you don't need this. Like you don't need to inject until you feel the tightness in your lungs. Like when you feel the tightness, you actually should stop. This is a sign that you had enough and that you should uh, stop the injection. But uh, this, uh, this tightness in your chest, this is a physiological reaction. This is not a reaction of, uh, th this is not a sign of that, that the ozone is working or that it's, this is the, the, the therapeutic uh, threshold that you need to reach. No, this is a physiological reaction and it shows you that uh, you've had enough and you should not inject past that point. Uh, he says, I have been doing DIV for about one month, but I have yet to experience this, even at a level as high as 50 micrograms per milliliter, I guess he assumes. Well, that, that's great. You know, if you don't experience this, this is great. You don't, don't push it until you experience this. You don't have to experience this sensation in order for the DIV to, to be of therapeutic value. If you don't experience it, even better, because this can be extremely uncomfortable. All right, great. All right, guys, I think everything worked out, the sound as well. So this is, this is it for this. And as I said, if you're interested in DIV, if you want more information, then subscribe to my newsletter. This is thepowerofozone.com slash news. Later on, I will add a link underneath uh, this video into the description. So stay tuned, you know, keep your ears open about news about DIV ozone injections. So, and if you want to consult with me, if you have other questions, want to talk to me, then go to my website, thepowerofozone.com slash book me, and you can book some time with me, talk about ozone therapy, androcut laculation. I've chelated for nearly five years with the androcut laculation. I've done ozone for over 10 years and I've seen some shit now. <laughs> so um, in any case, guys, thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, hold on a second. Let's see one more question. How much ozone do we get doing ozone steam sauna? I think we're getting a lot of ozone. You know, no one has ever measured this. No one has ever tested this. But my suspicion is that uh, ozone steam saunas, if you do them for 30 minutes, could be probably a more powerful systemic treatment than DIV, then major autohemotherapy, and many other intravenous ozone treatments. All right, this is it, guys. Uh, I probably would be doing this in the future, but because this seems to be working well. But this is it for now. And I see, you know, my neck is starting to act up, so I need to stop now. Thank you very much for tuning in, and see you in the next video. Bye bye.